Cookies have been under a lot of scrutiny lately, and for good reason. Companies have manipulated them to work in ways they were never intended. One of the articles I'll be referencing today is No Cookies, No Problem, Using E-Tags for User Tracking. As always, it will be linked down below in case you want to read it. It's also worth mentioning that while E-Tags aren't cookies, that doesn't mean that GDPR and CCPA doesn't provide some sort of protection against this tracking method. In order to understand e-tags, otherwise known as entity tag, we first need to cover cache and what it does for your browser. So when you visit a website for the first time, your browser needs to download all the content on the page from the web server. This is where cache comes in. So instead of your browser re-downloading all the images every time you visit a website, your browser can cache certain assets. Cache is a fancy way of saying storing an asset locally that you downloaded from a website on your computer. The next time you visit that site, those images can then be loaded from your cache, which is stored locally on your computer instead of the web server. Loading an image from your cache is nearly instant for your browser to display. You might have noticed a website loads much quicker the second time you visit it. Cache is one of the main reasons for that. Now that we know what cache is, that brings us to e-tags. One method for a web server to know that you have the most up-to-date version of the files it has is by assigning an e-tag. You can think of this as an ID assigned to this specific version of an asset. If I update the image on my web page, I want to make sure that your cache has the most recent version so you're not seeing old content. When your computer loads the web page, it sends that e-tag to the server when requesting that asset. This provides confirmation the e-tag matches what the server has. If the e-tag has changed, then your browser will fetch the new image from the web server. If the e-tag has not changed, your browser will load the cached version. So everything I described so far is the intended use of cache and e-tags. At this point, we have an ID that your browser sends to the web server. Let's talk about how that can be abused. So in the example in the article, the site the author built has an embedded iframe. You can think of an iframe as a box on a web page used to display other types of content, such as photos, videos, or documents. So for this example, the iframe is a white one by one pixel on a white background, which means that it's essentially invisible to the end user browsing the site. Your browser loads this one by one pixel every time you, the end user, changes pages. There is a small piece of server-side code generating a unique ID and overriding the e-tag ID that would normally be assigned to the one by one iframe. The server then tracks and stores this unique ID. I mentioned earlier that your browser will send the e-tag ID along with the request for that specific asset on a page. Now understanding that concept, the logic built into the site says that if there's an e-tag ID sent along with the request for this one by one pixel, then this is considered a returning user and the e-tag ID is kept the same. So since this one by one pixel is on every page, each time you change pages, you keep sending that same e-tag back. Now, if no e-tag is sent on the request, then this is considered a new visitor. The server generates a new e-tag ID and then stores it on the web server. This is the ID that your browser will then send back on every subsequent request for that one by one pixel, allowing the site to essentially track you without a cookie. While this method of tracking is not ideal and likely not implemented by many companies, it's useful to be aware of the fact that it exists. Funny enough, the fast food chain Wendy's has a note about it in their cookies and tracking technology policy on their website. So one option would be to disable cache completely in your browser. I personally don't think this is a great option. The other option is using an add-on called Mod Header, which is available for both Chrome and Firefox to send a blank if none match header. This is the name of the header which your browser sends the e-tag ID into the web server when requesting an asset. By using mod header to send a blank if none match header back to the web server, it'll make sure that this e-tag ID is not used to track you. One thing to note when setting up the add-on, you will need to enable it to send an empty header. By default, it won't send the header if it's empty. I'll have the instructions listed below in case you want to follow those. 